On tonight's show, we are talking lots and lots of sports, particularly how Josh Shaw's pants are on fire. We're talking about possible NHL expansion, and we got a lot of stuff going on in the NHL, NFL and some NBA news, so stay tuned. Round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. I think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaw. <laughs> and tonight, uh, Chewbacca is extra scary because he recently drafted, and he felt like he got screwed in the draft, so... Yeah. Fantasy football, I mean. Fantasy football. Chewbacca doesn't like to get messed up in fantasy football drafts. No, he, actually, he does not. He, he's very particular about that. Just like if you tried to watch us on Tuesday and you got like 100 invites and then nothing worked, that would be my fault. I did not have producer extraordinaire Brendan with me. So, um, yeah, these computer things, um, I hit buttons, and for some reason sound wouldn't come on. I, I don't know what happened. I was, I was smashing all the buttons I could. You do know what happened, because when you described it before the show, I told you what happened in about 30 seconds. But it was a joke. And actually, I told you that I found out what had happened. And it was a joke. Damn. Ruin the joke. It's all over. All right, now I just lost. Try to make a joke about your failures? No. No, 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 no. Yes. (laughs) Joke about failures. That is the best way to fail. Is funnily. Is that a word? That is now. Where's my face dictionary? Funnily. Something that is funny with an L Y. <laughs> okay. We're going to go with yeah, just gonna... rolling on ahead. But let's start it off the same way we started off every week. And that is with the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week Award. <laughs> and this week's award, now it was almost a Chewbacca should chainsaw, but I, I, something pretty cool happened in the, the sports arena. Now, it's on the fringe of sports, but it's definitely a sport. And that is... Swimming. Katie Ledecky uh, recently was at the Pan Pacific Games, which is pretty much just if you border the Pacific Ocean, if you touch it somehow, you're in the games. Um, So a lot of the best swimmers in the world are actually there because a lot of those Asian countries, especially China, Japan, uh, have good swimmers. Korea, um, as well as Australia is known for their swimming. And, you know, the USA, we're the best. That's that's how we work. U.S., Canada... No, Canada's not very good at swimming because all their water is frozen. I'm just going to st- state it. All year round, their water is frozen. Except for their Pacific Ocean water? No, 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 no. no. Atlantic Ocean water? No, 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 no. Frozen. Hot springs? Frozen. <laughs> the hot springs are frozen? <laughs> that's, hey, that's Canada for you. Frozen everything. Frozen everywhere. But just like they're, that's why they have ice hockey everywhere. They try to have ponds frozen. So you got to do something with it. You can't swim in it. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Now, if there was an I ice, maybe confusing swimming. it with the Arctic. Part Which of it is, is in the Arctic. Arctic. Part of it is in the Arctic Circle. Frozen. Not all of it. Frozen. Frozen. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. So the so frozen this... wasteland, Canada. <laughs> Sorry, Canada. You just became a wasteland. You should thaw out a little bit. All right, guys. Thaw out. All right. Sorry, Canada. We're, we're picking on you for some reason. I don't know why. Just because I like to. But Katie Ledecky, she not only was the best swimmer in the event, uh, Michael Phelps, I believe, was quoted saying she's a beast or something like that, Um, but she won for the women's. She won the 200, the 400, the 800, and the 1500 freestyle. She won those events. Also, she won as part of a relay team. But the real cool thing that she did, not was that she dominated all those events, it's that she shaved six seconds off of her own world record time in the 1500 meter free. Now, if you know swimming or if you don't know swimming, 
usually when you break a world record, you break it by like 0.2 seconds or maybe half a second. Or maybe if you're doing really, really good, you beat it by a second. You never shave six seconds off of a world record, and that's what she did. Not only was it a world record, it was her own world record. And that wasn't the only world record she beat. She also shaved about a half a second off of her 400 freestyle record. So she's breaking her own records. And I just think that's G-code when you break your own records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only do you already have a record, but you broke your own record by by that much. And it's like you would assume that when she set the record to begin with, she was at peak game. So it'd be difficult to do much better. Like maybe you can still push it a little bit. This is showing that she was not apparently at that peak of game. She still had much, much more to to give out. So. And she is only 17 years old, so we're still looking for more for her. She could be the female Michael Phelps, where she goes and wins like eight gold medals. I could see it. It's very yeah. unlikely, but I could see I it. I remember when uh, when Phelps, he had his Olympic, um, what was he, 18 or 19, the, the time they first started um, getting a whole in bunch Athens, of gold. I believe he was 18 in Athens, where he won something like yeah. eight medals, but only six of them were gold, and then he was like 22-23 in Beijing and won the eight golds. Yeah. Right. yeah, and at that point they were saying, he hadn't even started like the weight training or anything because they wanted him to get a little older first. So, you know, maybe that's the same thing um, here too. Like maybe there's certain kinds of training she hasn't even started because of her age. And so yeah. next time we see her, or may- maybe not even next time, because maybe you know three, four years from now, five years from now, we'll see big stuff. But obviously, you know, she's 17. She's got well, I mean, the next Olympics in 2016, I mean, those are only two years away, so she's probably going to crush that when she's 19. And then she'll be 23 for the next set of Olympics, so we're going to be seeing a lot of Katie Ledecky. So, Katie, yeah, I'm saying. you get our Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week. <laughs> but no, I agree, she's not even in her prime, and she's killing it, so... You know, it's kind of like us on this show. We're not even in our prime in this show, and we're killing it. (laughs) Really? That was like a a mutual thing. Like, I was giving it to both of us. So really, you just bumped yourself there, too. No, I want you for telling... You share in that womp. You share in that womp, all right? You share it. Okay, I'll share the womp. Ooh. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Womps hurt my feelings. Every, I don't know. I don't know if you know this, but every time you want me, that's like an hour of crying in my room by myself. <laughs> that's what it translates to. So every womp, so if I get womped three times on the show, man, am I crying for a long time about it. Man, you're just way too oversensitive. I would think that you would have had a tough skin by now with all the, you know, living with Chewbacca and all, but... All right. Chewbacca, Chewbacca just... He just... I can't talk. I don't want to cry on camera. <laughs> but, so, but yeah, so good job, Katie Ledecky. Now let's talk about something that everybody wants to talk about, and that's because it is the greatest sport in the world, and that is the NFL. Uh, running down a couple the of The NFL people. is the greatest sport in the world? Yes. Not, not football. A lot of American football. football. No, just the NFL. Just College the NFL. football sucks. It's not, right. it's not part of the High NFL. school football, nothing. Yeah, uh, the NFL is what makes football so great. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not, a, I'm not against college football. I just... I like to watch the highest level of competition, even though I would never be in that level of competition. I just like to watch it. So, but only the NFL it. counts as as the greatest sport. Like yes. the others don't even yes. count as football. They don't even count as football. They're just they're just other. There's the NFL and other. If you would like to disagree with Brian, send a comment down below. (laughs) You don't want to disagree with that, but yes. So we're talking about the NFL, and so let's start it off with um, Josh Gordon, the prolific wide receiver who last year went nuts, had about 1,700 yards, really like 1,650, um, in only 14 games because he was suspended the first two games. Well... Apparently, he didn't learn his lesson from being suspended the first two games of the season because over the past offseason, he not only got a DUI arrest, but he tested positive for marijuana for the second time. So he did was appeal. Was related to the DUI? Was he a DUI for the marijuana? No. Or was no, it a no, different DUI? It was separate, separate DUI, I believe. So it was like um, a drunken DUI? Yeah, yeah. So not... Not good. <laughs> Not good either way, but yeah. So um, now he appealed the suspension saying that it was only secondhand marruana inhalation, and so it doesn't count as him actually doing it, which How I How is he going to prove that? Uh, again, yeah, like it's in your system. That's what proves that you were around it. And by the way, you're it a millionaire. You don't have to hang hand. around people. Yeah, and I don't think secondhand really shows up on tests, so I, I'm no... Well, or, or or if there's enough in the air for it to show up on tests, doesn't it 
also have an intoxicating effect? Isn't that something people do, is sit in a room full of it? So isn't, like, secondhand just another... knowledge would anybody just for marijuana? No, mm, I don't think so. I, I, I honestly don't believe in this secondhand excuse. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's probably bullshit anyway, but... Yeah. It just, yeah, I, I'm not going to go for it, Josh. I'm not going for it. But you got suspended for the whole year, and um, you screwed a lot of fantasy football owners out there who were hoping you would come back in the middle of the season. Not me, because I don't bank on things like that when I draft, but a lot of people out there. So he was actually drafted in my league on Tuesday. Now, he was drafted with the absolute last pick. So, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. But, uh, you know, you kind of screwed some people over there. You especially screwed over your team. You especially screwed over Brian Hoyer, who needs... A help, a helpful wide receiver like you to make sure that Johnny Manziel doesn't usurp his starting position. But yeah. you know who we really screwed over the kids, the kids, think the kids of the Cleveland, kids of Cleveland. Yeah, they have sh- crappy teams. I almost said the S word, okay. but then we're talking to kids, and you shouldn't curse at kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what though? We've been we read on uh, on Cleveland a lot, and. Yeah, the Browns, terrible. Mm-hmm. Indians, terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, even with, with Johnny Manziel, I, I don't see anything going for them. But um, but they, they got LeBron James back. Hold on, hold on. You're skipping. Nope, nope. nope. We're not talking about that yet. Why would you We're do not that? talking about that yet? Why would you skip to a story that doesn't happen for another 20 minutes? I didn't know that you had that story. You <laughs> we ran, we ran down what was going on before the show. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> so whatever. push it forward. Push it forward. Let's go to the next <laughs> NFL story. And that is um, Seattle, the Seahawks, have been fined $300,000 and are, have had too many camps for next year taken away because of having too physical of practices this past offseason. They are known for liking to put on the pads. Yeah, too physical of practice. With the new bargaining agreement, they are not allowed to go full pads the entire time. They're not allowed to do full contact drills the entire time. You're only allowed to do it a certain amount of times. And um, apparently they like to go over. Now, this is what I say to them. That's, That's not a competitive thing. That's a safety thing, I'm guessing? I think it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. They They want to cut down on the concussions, and so taking away half the time you get hit should help with that. Okay. Even though concussions are not cumulative, sense. necessarily. Like, if you let your body heal properly from one concussion, you won't necessarily be more susceptible to another concussion. Yeah, but I think the idea is the less time you have risking getting any concussions, the yeah. less likely you are to get any. Yeah, so that's kind of what they say. Now, what I say to this is... Um, they won the Super Bowl last year, so I want every team in the NFL from now on to just get these penalties and fines because, I mean, yeah, you want to be safe with your players, but you also want them to play well, and obviously you cannot prepare your team well to get into the physical play, especially last year. I'm going to just refer back to my favorite team, the Redskins. Last year they could not tackle for crap because Mike Shanahan never wanted anybody to touch anybody in any of the practices, and so what did you have? A bunch of people with you. This year, Jay Gruden's running it. He did tackling drills at one point, and now it seems like they're solid tacklers. So it, it's it's catch-22. You don't want to get your players hurt, but you know what? If they're not performing on the field, what's the point of having them out there? I mean, If you're not actually practicing what they're going to have to do, yeah. it's difficult to, to be sure that they're going to be able to do it right when it comes exactly. down to the, when it comes into the game. So, yeah, I thought that was kind of silly, them finding him. Especially three hundred thousand. That seems like excessive amount. This is the NFL. Come on. That's true. They make billions of dollars. Who cares? That's especially when, for them. when the Super Bowl. When they just won the Super Bowl, they have money galore. Yes, they're, they're not they're hurt. Fine. They're fine. They're fine. And I bet they you all Seattle fans that. are like, "Cool, get take away mini camps every year. We don't care as long as we keep winning. That's all we want." So yeah. So, eh, I'm kind of on your side here, Pete Carroll. Even though I don't like your franchise very much. That's my bum, look bum, for. Bum. Well, that's my look for franchises I don't like. Mm. Mm. Okay, so, so let's take it from there and jump over to the Carolina Panthers, and that is because Cam Newton, uh, in his last preseason game, cracked a rib. Actually, um, now that's a really painful injury for anybody because it like hurts to breathe when you have a cracked rib. But especially for a quarterback who gets hit in that area a lot and then has to use his 
that part of his body, you know, those muscles and everything to throw the ball. But he says he's going to be ready for week one, so I, I, I wouldn't do it. I would take a couple weeks off just because cracked ribs hurt. I've never had one, but I know. Do they hurt? They hurt. They don't feel good. I'm, that's, I'm just going to go out on a There's a lot that you can do about them, though, to be honest. Like, you, you blend them heal. up, right? Yeah, and and let, let them heal. heal. Yeah, I mean, he'll have probably a special set of padding there. Um, I remember Donovan McNabb used to always have this special, like, rib protector, especially for the lower ribs. Um, but it, it hurts. I would give myself a week or two off. Uh, now, I mean, I'm not a competitor like that, so I can't blame you for wanting to play. But if it turns out that this becomes a nagging injury throughout the whole year, it's going to hurt your team worse than just missing you for the first game or two. So, I mean, it depends. Depends. I mean, I've um, known and heard people that like they'll get cracked ribs, and they'll be in pain, but they won't necessarily realize they have a broken rib for like weeks, and they'll be like, "Oh, really? Oh, I just thought it was like hurt a little bit." Are they NFL players? Some of them are, uh, like kung fu masters. Mm. And that's why they didn't realize it because they're just always in pain from fighting. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> that's what I was about to. Say. I was like, well, because NFL players, I could see that too because it's just like, oh, I got hit hard there, and I keep getting hit there, so that's why it hurts. So, but yeah, eh, that's a pretty painful injury though. So let's move it on and talk about how the Patriots traded away five-time Pro Bowler Logan Mankins, and the reason they traded him. And I thought this was absurd. All these ideas were flying around because they traded him for a fourth-round pick and for a tight end, Tim Wright. Um, Tim Wright's not anything special. Now, he did do well towards the end of last year, uh, got a little more production going, but nothing special by any meaning of the word. And when you already have Gronkowski out there, I mean, what do you need this guy for? So I thought to myself, I was like, huh, what is going on here? Are they really worried about Gronkowski not coming back from an injury? So this is kind of their way of, of saving themselves because tight ends play a lot into that Patriots passing game. But then I read an article that said Tom Brady was pissed at Logan Mankins. So the real reason they traded him was because he refused to restructure his contract. Now, the reason Tom Brady was pissed that they traded him was because he wouldn't restructure his contract. He came out and said something along the lines of, do you know how many times I've restructured my contract just to, to make sure we have a good team? One of the times I restructured was to give you more money on yours. So what is your problem? Why aren't you being a team player like the rest of us? It's not like we're asking you to be poor. We're just asking you to take a little less money. And um, so that's kind of what happened. So now he went from a perennial pro, uh, Super Bowl contender to the bottom of the bottom in Tampa Bay. So I think uh, Logan Mankins got his just desserts. Hmm. Yeah, it's one of those uh, interesting side effects of the uh, of the cap. You know, the team dynamic of we have to stay under cap, so sometimes the big players need to to take a little less money, which we which we hear about in in like basketball all the time. Even though basketball doesn't have such a hard cap, yeah. And like Tom Brady said, even Tom Brady deals with it, you know, so they can have a good team. Tom Brady's done it at least three times that I can think of. Uh, now, I'm not the hugest Tom Brady fan, but, you know, it seems like a stand-up oh, guy to me. Yeah. Granted, granted, Tom Brady is probably making up for it with more, a lot more endorsements than most other people are, you know, yeah. with yeah, the very, side very money he's getting. But still, I mean, it's not like he's asking them to be poor. He's asking them, him to be you know, a little less of a multimillionaire than he is already. So, I mean, think about it. If you take $2 million off of... I mean, Logan Mankins is the type of player, I don't know what his contract is for sure, but I'm pretty sure he makes between 8 and $10 million a year. So if you make closer to the $7 million, and then your, your, your team can sign uh, another defensive player or, let's say, a wide receiver because they have none in New England, oh, man, maybe that puts us over the top and we're Super Bowl champions. And that's something you would sacrifice for your team. Now, don't get me wrong, a million dollars is a lot of money, no matter which way you cut it. No matter who you are, that's a lot of money. But when you're already getting $7 million, I'm, I mean, do you really need eight? Do you? No, maybe. probably not. I mean, I don't, but maybe maybe he does. Maybe, maybe he does. Got... Maybe he does. I mean, he is an offensive lineman. Maybe that one million like would cut into his food budget. I don't know what he eats. Maybe he likes to go to fancy restaurants and order, you know, hundred thousand dollar steaks. Maybe he's been he bad with the money. He's got a lot of debt. Maybe he was a mafia. 
You know, yeah, sometimes right, when you know the mafia, you got to make sure you got that money for them. You got to have that cash flow rolling, or you never know. So <laughs> that Boston mafia, you know, gotta be careful. Gotta be careful. But yeah, so that's uh, that was the Patriots, and let's talk about the last NFL story, and that is everybody's noticed this. This has been uh, just a plague on the preseason, and it. If you haven't noticed it, I don't know. I guess you haven't watched any of the games, and that is because what it, what the refs are doing now. They've been told to spotlight several different defensive infractions, mostly uh, the illegal contact and holding in in the uh, on the other side, on the defensive side of the field. I, I don't know what to call that for a second, but um, so if you notice, flags have almost doubled this preseason than they normally do. So this is yeah, there was a lot of flags in yeah. in the games that I've watched. It was, Excessive. And this has encouraged one of the most upstanding owners in the NFL, Art Rooney. Uh, now, I'll give you a little bit about this guy. I believe this guy was the ambassador for the U.S. to Ireland. So, you know, not some shabby, you know, just, oh, I'm rich, so I'm going to buy a team and do whatever I want. Not not a Daniel Snyder, not a Jerry Jones. Like a really nice guy, you know, one of the cr- like craft like from the Patriots. So, he runs this franchise very, very well. And so, when this guy comes out and says, hey, refs, pull it back a little bit. Relax. Let them play a little bit more than you're letting them do. Uh, You know something's wrong, because this is one of the guys who writes rules in the NFL. They have the one rule in the NFL where you you have to interview at least one minority candidate if you have a head coaching job, and it's called the what? The Rooney Rule. This guy sets precedent in the NFL, and if he's coming out and saying, you're taking it too far, there's something wrong. Yeah, um... Wait, but but you said that they were the refs were told to highlight these, or they just yes. have been in the beginning so of the season. They are going uh, the, the the competition yeah. committee, I believe, um, which is made up of owners. Now, I bet you they they do this every year. They have points of emphasis uh, every year. Okay, this year we're gonna try to crack down on this penalty more. You know, be call it a little more stingy because like like holding. Technically, there's a hold on every single NFL play. If you were to microscope, zoom in on all of the offensive and defensive linemen battles, you could probably call a holding on every play. They don't because a lot of that's just letting people play. You only call the more egregious ones. But this year, they were saying, okay, watch that. Now, what they're trying to do, what it seems like to me at least, is open up the offense because offense, everybody wants to see offense. They're trying to kill the defense, make the offense amazing. So... They they made the point of emphasis this year on illegal contact and holding uh, more than five yards past the line of scrimmage. Yeah, which which I personally don't like. I like to see more. I know we all like to see touchdowns. We all like to see big points. But we've been in this trend of defense taking the back burner for quite some time. We've seen plenty of high-scoring games. You you also want to see... The, the defense do well, you want to see people struggle for those points. You know, that's that's what one of the beauties of football is that you get some points, but you, they're not super common. They are right. fought for. They're they not easy. They're not easy to get. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, I like to see offense. Granted, I love it. But I also like to see defense. So let's, uh, let's get real, NFL. You're being a little too crazy. I don't appreciate it. Stop being so crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want it to turn into the the NBA where it's just you know a slew of points. Which you know, basketball is going to have more points anyway. But where just like anything gets you points. Oh, you you looked at him funny. Yep, go to the free free throw line, get some more points. Whatever. Yeah, don't. <laughs> you touched him, silly. Uh, go to the free throw line, get more points. But yeah. So, well, that was the news from around the NFL. So if you have anything to add to that, anything we missed out, or if you think I'm just stupid on some of the points we pointed out, hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at Words From Our Face on Twitter, Words From Our Face at gmail.com, and, of course, Google Plus and Facebook. All good places. I think Google Plus is how most people find us, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at least a lot of people seem to be talking to us down there. I don't know if they're all watching us. Are you guys watching us? Let us know. If you are, let us know. Comments down below. Or Google Plus. <laughs> hey, we just talked about it. So, oh. But let's take that and let's mosey on down the path that we've been blazing. Uh, for. Yeah, well, that's a weird metaphor I just used. Um, but I'm going to go with it. The path we've blazed or the trail we've blazed. Huh? Or huh? the trailblazers? Uh, no, 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 no. We're not the trailblazers. <laughs> see, that would have been cl- more clever. But no, 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 no. no, no, no. We no. can't have a story about the trailblazers. No, no. See, see, we're about to talk NBA and there's already a team called the trailblazers, so we can't say it that way. Yeah. 
We Unless played you have stories about the Trailblazers. Which I do not. So we are not the Trailblazers. We are the Blazers of Trails. Oh, you're going to want me. Can't you, can't you think of a story? Like, come on. <laughs> There's going to be something going on with okay, them. Okay, Trailblazers. Um, okay, here's just one off the top of my head. I believe NBA Live, the EA Sports NBA game, is going to feature Damian Lillard, last year's rookie point guard, uh, of the Trailblazers on the cover. So... Yeah, I nice. think he deserves it. He had probably the best shot of the playoffs last year, this three-pointer to win the game against the Rockets. So there you go. There's your Trailblazer story. Yeah. Yeah, let okay. me... Let me... Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Came up with that story right off the top of the head. But yeah, so let's get into the real stories I wrote down, though. Um, and number one, I want to talk about Doc Rivers. Resigned with the LA Clippers. This was not something that was guaranteed because if you watched any of our previous shows, which you should have, and if you haven't, we'll wait. About Donald Sterling. I'm sorry, I should tell you which video to watch. Donald Sterling video. We'll wait. Okay, welcome back. So, since you watched those videos in that little two-second spot that I gave you... You paused the video. Uh, Well, no, no, people don't know how to pause. They just keep it going. You have so little confidence in our listeners. (laughs) Well, I couldn't even get the sound working, so it's not that I have little confidence in them. I just have little confidence in anything technological. Okay, Brian, there's this little thing. It's like these two bars. All right, no. Mm -mm. Click it. No. It pauses the video. Nope. Mm -mm. I think that's too difficult. Too difficult. Wait, can I click that? No, I can't because we're live broadcasting, but I'm sorry. (laughs) I got off track again. Uh, And Doc Rivers, so he's re-upped, and he was not going to re-sign... And he was not even going to coach this year if Donald Sterling was still uh, the owner of the franchise. But since that sale has been uh, authorized, it's already gone through to Steve Ballmer, the, the ex-Microsoft CEO. Uh, yeah, he will remain coach there. So that's a really good sign. And hopefully they'll do well because I really root for those guys. They went through a really tough time, especially during the playoffs last year with that whole Donald Sterling thing floating over their heads. And it was really hard. I mean, just to be just to be a human around that guy, you know, it it takes everything I have not to want to just like go feral and rip his eyes out or something like that. If I was one of his players and I heard what he was talking about, pretty much saying about me. And uh, yeah, so I applaud all those guys for their professionalism and just being upstanding gentlemen. And I wish you all the best for the next season, especially you Doc Rivers, who seem to be the, you know, the focal point of everything. So he kind of kept his team calm, kept the whole city calm, and kept everything moving in the right direction. So and they did pretty well despite all that. Like yeah. obviously they didn't win the 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 games, but they made it through. They made it money. through the first round. So I mean that's never yeah. anything to laugh at. So yeah, no. uh, you deserve all the money you're getting. Maybe a little bit more, Doc Rivers. They should probably put a couple million dollar bonus on there for what you did last year, but. Eh, that's just what I think. Especially now that you have Balmer with his deep pockets. I mean, the guy Whoa. threw out, what, what was it, two, bil- two, two billion? Two billion dollars. Two billion. Like and that's probably about $1.2 billion too much. <laughs> he, he more than doubled what he should have paid for that franchise. So, ugh. But, you know, at least he got it out of uh, Mr. Donald Sterling's hands. So, yeah, that's that. And uh, I want to talk about the Love, Kevin Love. The deal has been finalized, which Brendan tried to ruin. Um, Cleveland finally has something to rejoice about because now they have LeBron James, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Love. And so they have a really good shot at being a championship contender because with Paul George going down in Indiana, they lost their lynch piece. Um, And you never know with Derrick Rose in the Chicago franchise because if he stays healthy, they're great. If he doesn't, which he hasn't for the past three years, uh, they're nothing. So you never know what's going to happen there. I, yeah, I'm kind like, of disappointed. I, I really wish this deal wouldn't have gone through. I, I really thought it would be really fun to see just like the wild, wild west. I know it's the Eastern Conference, but the wild, wild west, because you you wouldn't have known who's coming out of that conference. Everybody had an equal shot, equal playing field. There's not one team that you could point to and say that that team is a lot better. Me as a Washington Wizards fan, I could say, hey, my team has just as good a shot at going to the championship round as anybody else here. Now I can't say that as much. Now anything can I still can, happen. Because I have confidence in our team. Well, there you go. Thank you. All right. Say it. Unlike you. Actually, I, I don't. I, I don't. I'm all surprised that they made it to the playoffs this year, to be honest. Mm. But it was nice. <laughs> but, but it's okay. It's okay. We will make it to the playoffs. 
when Kevin Durant comes to play with us in 2016. That is right. 2016 championship for the Washington Wizards. Go ahead and etch us on the plaque because Kevin Durant's coming to D.C. Because not only is he the greatest offensive scorer in the league right now, possibly that the league has ever seen, he's one of the most outstanding gentlemen. He's community involved. Uh, he's uh, just got a great smile. And I heard he smells nice, even after a game. And, and for know, those of you who are new to the show, to be fair, Brian was saying back in like April or May, Kevin Durant was going to come to the to Washington in 2016. This is you know, the rumors have picked up. Brian's been saying it the whole time, and he's been doing, he's been hyping it up for the whole. So time. what you're saying is that I could almost be attributed for bringing Kevin Durant to DC if he comes in 2016. I'm saying if Kevin Durant comes, he needs to come on our show. That is right. I, even if you don't want to come to D.C., just come on the show anyway, KD. I'd love to have you. It'd be awesome. You, you can just phone in, whatever. We'll work it out. Yep. We'll work. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. Even if I have to put my cell phone up to a microphone to get you on, <laughs> we will do it, and it'll be good. But, yeah, so that's uh, – and that's the NBA for it for you this week because uh, we do have about a month, month and a now, half. Hold on, hold on. You, you almost glossed over the big point like I was trying to make before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cleveland, yeah. Ha- fi- Cleveland finally has a sports team to uh, to look forward to that's actually going to be good. Yeah. Like we keep we, we rat on them so much about how all their sports teams are just terrible and they have, to, they have nothing to watch, and it's sad. But they got basketball now. They got LeBron James. They got they, and they got pretty set there. Them. And and their football team is looking better. Their defense is awesome. They're working That's on the offense. So I have no I'm not going anywhere. You're right. Sorry. You're <laughs> hey, right. You're right. You not going they're, anywhere. They're, they're cursed. I'm sorry. You Be guys... happy about you have basketball. So you can finally get a championship since I believe the last time the city of Cleveland, any other major sports, has won a championship was 1949. So wow. it's been a long time been quite a long time. So, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry I glossed over that. We were actually going to compliment Cleveland and say we were hoping for the best for them unless you meet the Wizards in the playoffs and then I hope you lose. Sorry. I guess. It's kind of how I wish. But, yeah, so that's the NBA for you, folks. Uh, let me know if there's any big NBA stories that we missed out on. Uh, hit us up. Comments down below. At Words My Face on Twitter. And if you just disagree with any of what I just said, if you disagree with Kevin Durant's coming to DC in 2016, you're just wrong, so don't leave that in comments. Okay, you can leave it in comments. Fine. Leave it. But you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to talk around in a circle about how Kevin Durant is going to come. So just just hunker down. we got about an hour left of the show, and it's all going to be me talking about how cool Kevin Durant is. Oh, I'm just joking. Yeah, we, we better be moving on because I got um, I, I got more important things to do than to listen to you talk for an hour about mm-hmm. anything. No, it's about Kevin Durant, so you'll sit, you'll sit there, you'll like it, all right? All right, all right. And so this is going to be a first on Words From My Face. A very first, I'm doing a hockey story. What? Yeah, yeah, you didn't expect that. Nobody expects an NHL story on Words From My Face. <laughs> and now this is a very speculative story, but rumors have been flying all over the interweb uh, that possibly a two-team expansion, almost up to a four-team expansion, it might be happening for the NHL. Uh, now, really, the, the one city that I've heard the most about is Las Vegas. I've also heard, uh, like, Quebec might get a team. Uh, cause, Las I mean, Vegas? Yeah, Las Vegas, they have no major team of anything. I, yeah, they have no major team of anything because they're, they're, they're Las Vegas, but also for, like, they would get hockey, of all things. And, like, aren't they, like, one of the hottest places in the country? Happens to be in a desert, so yep. It's in. It's not just in a desert, but it's in like a southern desert, and just yeah. I don't know. Like the, you fry food on a rock there. Yeah. That, People that, literally, you cannot walk outside without shoes on, often enough because your feet will get burns immediately. From my yeah, that's, understanding, that's just the city that I kept hearing about. So, yeah. So that's <laughs> that's where they might be going now. Where would they put it, though? Are they going to put it in a casino? Is that what it's going to be? Is there going to be gambling next, like, in the the hockey stadium? Well, that's why most major sports kind of shy away from that that city for their venues, uh, just because they're worried about the gambling. But, I mean, the strip is big enough. You don't need that huge of a a space for uh, a hockey rink. I mean, half of those hotels and casinos are 
two to three, four times larger than what a hockey rink would be. So I'm sure they could squeeze it in somewhere. Um, but if you notice two years ago, they did this reformatting of the NHL divisions, and they split it up into an Eastern and a Western more than they had before, and there's like three divisions instead of four, and they kind of differentiated the way the teams were broken down. And I kind of see this as a conspiracy, like they've been planning to do this for a while, because when they broke it up, they had 16 teams in the East and only 14 teams in the West. So it's almost like they're like, hey, we're going to get two more. So I kind of see that happening, even though the NHL's broke, so maybe maybe uh, the Las Vegas monsters uh, pay for it. It's not like this stuff can happen overnight anyway, so they've probably been, been talking about it to some extent yeah. for a while. Because, I mean, getting a new football, uh, not football, a new hockey team, a new major pro sports team anywhere is a big deal. So Yeah. yeah. And like I said, it'd have to be two teams because you can't just bring in one team and make it 15 in one conference. That wouldn't work. So, uh, eh, you know, let's just keep our eyes on that story, see, see what happens. Um, it could happen. You never know. But let's take you to probably the number one story of the night, and that is because uh, USC cornerback Josh Shaw, his pants are on fire, and they're like a three-alarm blaze. And now, if you heard about this story, now over the weekend, Josh Shaw is a senior cornerback. He's one of um, the team captains, was actually just voted a team captain on Saturday, ironically, um, before this. And he's been in the news because he was injured on Saturday night slash Sunday morning. And not just any injury, he has two high ankle sprains. And now you might say, wow, that's a interesting. Both ankles got hurt. That's that's kind of weird. So when he reports to practice on Sunday or Monday, he goes to his coach and says, hey, coaches, look, I really hurt my ankles. I'm really sorry. It was an emergency. This is what happened. I was hanging out in this apartment building, and I noticed that my 7-year-old nephew, who does not know how to swim, was struggling in a pool. So I put myself in hero mode, jumped off a two-story balcony, crawled my way down, and saved my nephew out of the pool. Now, this story got huge media attention. I mean, ESPN even picked it up and mentioned it. So it was like, oh, wow, this guy, you know, okay, you hurt your ankles, but you saved a life. It's okay. And then, like, literally, the next day, after hearing these reports, a lot of people started calling in and saying, uh, that's not quite what happened. And so USC launched their own investigation. So this is what I've gathered uh, from the investigation so far. So on Saturday night, the police were called to an apartment complex, um, which is actually where Josh Shaw's lawyer said that the accident happened. He did come out and say it was not saving his nephew, but it was in a fall from an apartment complex, and this is what the apartment complex was named in the police report. So the police were called to an apartment complex, um, and they were called there due to a screaming woman. Now, nothing more than that. They just There was a screaming woman in the building somewhere, so they come to investigate. Now, it just so happens they were called to the apartment of Shaw's girlfriend. Now, nobody was home, but they did notice that one of the back windows had been pried open and was damaged. So... That leaves wild speculation as to what happened. I mean, now, they did say Shaw's not a suspect in anything. He is not being accused of anything. He's not a suspect. But, obviously, some foul play happened somewhere. You have a screaming woman. You have a guy who jumped out of a window and hurt his ankles. And that's kind of all we know. And he's prone to making a very, like, elaborate stories of saving people's lives. Like... I just don't understand why you would go to that extent to to do that. Well, why, why not just say, oh, yeah, I sprained my ankle, something happened? Like, you don't even have to say anything. I mean, you don't have to well, make a big publicity. You are accountable, you are accountable to your, your team. But one of the worst things you can do is lie to your coaches. Like, that's absolutely horrible. Even if it's really stupid. But also, such an elaborate story, you're going to get yourself in the spotlight. Like, if yeah, it's well, something you want to cover up. You that, make it, oh, yeah, this dog was chasing me and I tripped. You know, or something like that. It's just, oh, I was walking around and I hurt myself. Just really stupid. Or I was walking down some steps and I tripped and sprained. Yeah, my yeah. I, I was out running. You know, right? Any, I, I was out running. I didn't see a. I didn't see a, a route somewhere. Whatever. Yeah. Anything nice and simple would be great. But this guy has to say that he's trying to save his nephew. Now, what this has cost him is they have suspended him indefinitely. Now, it's probably going to be like a two-game suspension. 
Can't imagine much more than that, because USC, if you've been following them this year, their secondary is pretty banged up, so they need this guy. But I, I just, I'm trying to think, piece together in my mind what could have happened. So he's obviously in his girlfriend's apartment. Something happens, he freaks out, and decides to jump out a two-story window. And his girlfriend is screaming about it. Well, they, they said there was someone screaming out. Did they do they know that there was the screaming no, coming no, from the I, I, Again, I'm just I'm just speculating. That was all speculation. They don't know who was screaming. It was coming from her apartment, but they do not know who it was. When the police arrived, there was nobody there. He was screaming. <laughs> he was like, ah, ah! Like a Well, maybe after and he jumped so he out, the window, to jump and, out the window yeah, well, to maybe, get away from the police, yeah. so no one find out about how badly he screams. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, maybe he was screaming after he jumped out the window and sprained both his ankles, because, I mean... Unless you're like a trained parkour professional, what the hell are you doing jumping out of a two-story building? I mean, come on. Come yeah. On. Yeah. I mean, we don't know anyone that, that does that. No, no. We've never known anybody who has maybe broken both their heels jumping off of a, a building. Yeah, that would be a lame, a lame injury. This guy, he at least... I mean, spraining your ankle is kind of a lame injury too, but... Yeah, it is pretty lame. It's a little bit more common. Breaking your heels is worse, though, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't know anybody who would have done that. We no. don't. Wink, wink. And by the way, it wasn't me either me or him. So if you want to know the story, hit us up in comments down below. We will give it to you. Um, yeah, we saw yeah, that so, story. So. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's uh, that's what Josh Shaw did. So let us know what you think about Josh Shaw. Is he just a dummy, or maybe is there some good reason he would have jumped out the window? There was no fire reported, so I can't figure out what reason yeah. he would use not to use the stairs. Didn't we have a strange lying story from the from college football last year too? Mm, Tio, um, Tio with the girlfriend, the, the the girlfriend that didn't exist. Oh, Manti Teo, yeah, 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 yeah. That was last year. Yeah, his whole uh, I was up with her every Is night. Is this a new trend? Like they they just yeah. are, are are I don't know maybe. Are the uh, admissions processes worse now for uh for these colleges? I mean, maybe part of the problem that is that bad at making lies. Well, I think part of the problem is that we're expecting too much out of these young kids. I mean, they're like 21, 22, sometimes 20, 18, 18, 19. 19. You know, I, I think we're expecting a little bit more out of them than them maybe to we're be just kids. Them much, honestly, we're probably giving them too much attention because, you know, I think back in the day, too, we probably wouldn't have given, like, they would get hype and attention, but not, like, media Not publicity so, so all the time. Yeah, and, and I mean, kids will be kids. These are kids. I mean, yes, they're 18, 19, 20. I mean, yes, most of them are more physically, like, buff and bigger than me, but who cares? They're still kids mentally. You gotta let them make some of those mistakes. And now, my opinion is, mistakes are some of the best ways to learn, and so you can't take away all these learning I mean, possibilities. Depending on what those mistakes are. But well, of course, whatever. yeah. It's not like if you murder somebody, that's not a mistake to learn how to murder somebody better. But like <laughs> jump, jumping out a window is a mistake that you can probably learn from, hopefully. Like, ah, shouldn't put myself in that situation again. <laughs> or I should learn to roll better. Yeah, well, that, that too, that too. <laughs> Very true. Or maybe he knows now he does not have a parkour f future. Or just in general, learn to not tell a really stupid lie about it that draws national attention. Yeah. Mm, all of those good lessons to learn. So, yeah, so Josh, uh, your kid, you'll get over it. Keep playing hard. Just keep your nose to the grindstone. You'll be just fine, buddy. So... Uh, let us know what you think, though. Should we have been more hard on Josh Shaw, or should we be too easy on him? Or um, do you know what really happened? Yeah, Reveal if you really know what happened, and my face. And again, if you want to hear the broken heel story, we will tell you, um, but you have to leave it in comments down below. So hit us up, at wordsmyface on twitter.com, and that is not how that goes. At wordsmyface on Twitter. Yeah. If you do that, wordsmyface on twitter.com, that would not come up with anything, I can't imagine. Uh, twitter.com is the name is the actual website. Yeah, but it'd be Twitter Just... slash at words for my face. No. Twitter.com slash at words for my face? Yeah. Well, yeah. Or just you would go on Twitter and you'd put on your Twitter account at words for my face. Yeah. So, okay. Do, so... do you use the Twitter account? Like, am I the only one that uses it? You don't use it. I use it. I retweet everything. Then how do you not know how this works? Because it's on my phone, and I only had to do it once a long time ago, and I never had to do it again. That's that's how. 
Come if on, you look man. to instruct Brian on how to use Twitter, I, I couldn't even get I, I couldn't even get our dra- my draft up on Tuesday, even though I, I tried for like forty five minutes. So uh, yeah, that is why I'm not called producer extraordinaire. That is why you are called producer extraordinaire. Apparently, apparently. Yes. But yeah, hit us up. Comments down below at Words for My Face on Twitter. Of course, Words for My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook, all great ways to get a hold of us. But I think that about does it for tonight's sports show. Man, our sports show feel like they're really short nowadays. No. We're still oh. going over the, our time limit of 30 minutes. Yeah, but that's nothing. We always go over our time limit. I don't know. We've been trying out a new format. So if you like the format we've been doing, uh, you know, where we do quicker sports stories. You know, or you don't, you want us to go back to maybe, maybe three major stories, we can do that too. But hit us up, let us know what you think. Um, I guess I'm still running the beard challenge, so you want to tell me how to shave my beard, that's a thing. And if you do want to do a Words to My Face League, we are still going to do it. Um, hit us up, comments down below. Yeah, we have, first we have come, a, few first slots, a few slots left. We, yeah, we, we have, have their... four, four left, so first yeah. come, first serve, hit us up, let us know. But as always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. Out of this? Oh, oh, it's not ready. <laughs> Here come the stall tactics. You hey, it's better than like stall. not getting it working. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Good night, everybody.